Introducing first, Justin Hammond. So Justin Hammond coming from Axis Jiu-Jitsu Academy, fighting under Jason Robig. This guy turned up at the weigh-ins in probably the most impressive shape out of the entire 30 fighters that pulled up. The one thing I will mention though, we've obviously got a, a pretty decent graphic designer. He's obviously changed the colour of his hair on the poster. So it looks like he's got blonde hair there. We do not need the lights on for this fight. He's got the <laughs> brightest red hair you'll ever see. So, And that's the point. I think Rangers have an advantage. They've got this superpower of just grit <laughs> and determination the in them, absolutely. and the ability to take punishment. But he's not going to let it get to the punishment point. He's very much in the point of dishing it out. Well, when you look at it, he's 33, so he's probably copped 33 years of abuse for his hair. <laughs> Unfortunately, Luke Brickworth's going to be on the other end of it right now. Just want to put it out there. Favourite entry song of the night. How good is You love it? Yeah, there, there are definitely walkout songs that I love. I love Sweet Caroline when that comes on. That reminds me of when I was in America. We used to sing that at the, uh, the karaoke all yeah. the time. Yeah, when, when you actually get the, uh, the crowd yeah, getting yeah, involved. Yeah. This one, maybe I've just been out bush too long, but this one gets me good. Yeah. I've got to say, mate, if I'm singing karaoke, I've had way too many drinks and I don't remember if I'm good or not. From what I hear, I'm not a very good You're singer. Not very good, that. No, but from the pedigree that Justin brings to the table here, though, he's got himself a purple belt in BJJ, and in terms of improvements, he's been improving on his mentality. So for those who don't realise, obviously you can be physically attributes, you can be great, you can have a lot of experience, but it's the mental game to bring into this as well, being fight ready. It takes a lot to stand across from someone who you know wants to cause you pain. Okay, please welcome his opponent out of the red corner, Luke Brinkworth. Uh, I've got to say too, boys, I was about to say, all, all three of us are purple belts and we know that we are absolute monsters and killers on the <laughs> ground as well. So if uh, Justin's a purple belt as well, we know exactly what he's bringing to the table. So I've had just about as much as you could do, could do to do with Luke Brinkworth up to this point. And he is one of my favourite amateur fighters to watch. Not the most tech. He's both, hasn't he? His both fights are on Correct, Coast yeah. So I've also, I also cornered against him on his second fight. It's 2-0. He's, I wouldn't say he's the most technical fighter in the world, but he has the most insane cardio. Yeah. And I promise you will not see he a backward it. step. Absolutely. He, he will get amongst it from the start. Yeah. While and we're doing that, I just want to clarify. You said three killers here. I only see one. Your young fella. <laughs> The young Lockyer Lionheart Walton sitting next to us. That's the only killer I can see sitting at this bench, but anyhow. And he, he smashed another purple belt. Connor, uh, Connor Birch, didn't he, mate? Absolutely destroyed him. I, I, I do feel that Connor wants a rematch in that point, but uh, <laughs> mate, at this back stage... Back in line, back in line, mate. <laughs> oh. Once the again, order. Back, back, in, back in a business here. So you, uh, I mentioned before, yeah, I've, I've obviously uh, trying to attend every single Grow Strong event. Every time I've seen Luke Brinkworth fight, I message Jason Longan straight away saying, how do we get him on XFC? He's phenomenal. And for some reason, every now and then they kept saying he's not ready yet. Yeah. But, I'm, but I'm like, am I watching a different fight? Like, that's, a, that's the same thing. So I've been trying to match him. I think it's been a year since his last fight. And there's one particular guy, I'm sure you can think of who it is. He's also fought on both Grow Strong and XFC. They were agreed to it, but he's just had a young kid. So this is his first step back after being a young father. So keen, it's been a journey for him. And I'm key. I love the guy, but man, he's got a test in front of him tonight. And this was my this favorite weigh in of the night is last a night. Featherweight fight, three by three minute rounds. Introducing first, in the blue corner, weighing in at 65.6 kilos, with a record of one win, no loss. Fighting out of Axis Jiu-Jitsu Academy, Justin <laughs> Hammond! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, weighing in at 66.2 kilograms. Training at a Game Brand Academy, holding, <laughs> holding an amateur record of two wins, zero to 
feet, please welcome Luke the Pitbull Brinkworth. He's got the best beard of the night, but I tell you what, has anyone else noticed what's on his chest? Yeah, the Brian Ebersole. He's done the Brian Ebersole. <laughs> Apparently he slipped into his DMs and asked for the uh, permission for it. <laughs> and uh, we got a phenomenal photo last night with Brian's face <laughs> right up against that chest hair. I was talking to him at the back and uh, he, he didn't have his hair done. And Oren walked in with his hair nice and cornrowed and Luke's like, how can I get that done? Oh, they're straight into it. Oh, did he drop him there? No, no, no he no, pulled him the guard. But Luke's making him work for it as a result. So at this stage, Justin's looking at locking up that leg and Luke's punishing that him. That is what he does. does. Oh, this is he's close. leaving him. He's it's over. Him. It's over. He's gone 3-0. Luke, oh. Oh. Luke <laughs> He pulled off the back lip too. I'm giving it to him. I'm about to cry just after having a kid makes a return. Easy work for the pit bull tonight. How exciting was that? Jason Lonigan trying to pull him down a little bit, but let him go. Phenomenal. Christian Marino in the cage. I tell you what, mate. Your backflip was horrendous compared to Brinkworth right there. <laughs> he almost hit his head on the roof. But the boys are jumping in there, congratulating him in terms of his fighter. I feel so sorry for Justin Hammond. I mean, you look at the <laughs> look at the list of killers they've got at Gamebred. Is there any reason that Luke oh. comes out prepared? When you talk about TMG having the best kids program, I tell you what, in terms of their amateur ranks right now, it's got to be Gamebred. For sure. Yeah, for as, sure. as much as we love your your uh, your integrated MMAs, you know. Game bread, I tell you what, they just constantly produce these phenomenal amateurs. And it's because they test them in the grind, hey? They also have their Wimp to Warrior series as well, but they do Retire the work. IMAF, they're always in everything. Yeah, they certainly are. But I just want to call out for anyone okay, ladies the work and it takes to get in here. The referee stopped the fight at in round one by 22 seconds by TKO. Your winner from the red corner, Luke the Pitbull Brinkworth. He lied to him. He didn't even let him punch him in the face. Oh. Why well, put an arrow on your chest if you're going to let someone punch you there and not do it? I mean, you can't punch someone if they pull guard. <laughs> I mean, he might have punched him from the bottom. Again, I'm just gutted for Justin. Oh. We, we know how much effort goes into the, and the level of skill for Brian to reach out to somebody and say for you're sure. ready for an XFC shot. You know, I speak to Adrian Pang about this all the time. There, there are so many highs in MMA, but the lows are just oh, absolutely, absolutely. gut-wrenching. And Unfortunately, Justin will probably run that fight through his, through his mind a million times. But the first thing I know, Brian Ebersole will be out there right now talking about a, a chance to come back and rerun that. There's yeah. no doubt. Look at the shape he got himself in. Absolutely. He's obviously got ability. Before you go anywhere. Oh. Sometimes, the question oh, that I think anybody yeah. here who doesn't know you needs to know. Who was the first person to call you Pitbull? Uh, my little brother. His little brother, he goes, you're a Pitbull. I was like, yeah, whatever. Like, you know, he's lucky I didn't bite him in a Pitbull, you know. Nah, just joking. <laughs> well, babe, you came out and you showed, you showed the crowd what you've got and they want to water us down for it. Wow! But Pitbull, you can't, can't stop you. Anyone you want to thank, maybe a baby mum? Uh, yeah, I just want to thank my whole team, uh, Christian, Lonnie, Jace, Dane, all you boys that helped me out. I want to thank all my, all my family and friends at the back there who bought tickets. Woo! I want to thank all the guys here watching this, what we're doing for. You motivated me, I love walking out. We're mainly just a team, uh, my wife. I've got a newborn, she's the wife, been looking after her while I've been training, so I love the wife so much. Um, yeah, just me, me, me quarter man, my teammate, my coach, my gym, everyone here. Everyone. Uh, just a shout out to Mr. Ebersol. I've got the um, RA for you, wherever you are. Where is he? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not really going to make call outs, but uh, I'd, I'd love to fight the, uh, the Highlander, Connor Birch. I'm coming for you. Probably not next fight, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to work my way up. You know, you're a legend, so I'm coming for you, mate. Well, you heard it. You heard it from the pit bull. Congratulations. There's one thing I love is when fighters ask for somebody, it makes our job so much easier. 